I just went surfing, didn't film it. It was super small, but really fun. <laughs> kind of like a party out there, so relaxed. Everybody just hanging out and talking. Uh, but I'm thinking of doing a painting here. There's a little spot that I've painted from before. But uh, let me show you kind of the routine here in the morning. All right, so this is 38th Ave, and uh, my board's just drip drying here a little bit. Anyway, I got the uh, Surf Paint Mobile. And so usually I keep my wetsuit in a plastic tub. In here I've got a bunch of stuff like sunscreen, my key, um, surf wax. Uh, then I've got my paints and my panel, wet panel holder, and some extra odd size panels over here. These are like panorama style panels. There's my palette, my backpack. Uh, I've got some books underneath my clothing there, hat. And this is so cool. This like seat folds down so I can just, I can fit probably a nine foot board in here it's so huge okay so the routine is typically i will park and then walk across east cliff here to take a look at the surf hey yeah right on man good seeing you this is called pleasure point out here this is like in the far distance and then this is called jacks right here this is where i was surfing today as you can see it's pretty small it was kind of happening for a little while there but now that the tide came in it's pretty much not happening anymore Okay, so the fog rolled in again. Change of plans. Gonna go to De La Hacienda. Amy Arnell's in town, so uh, we're gonna grab a burrito. Then I'm gonna, then I'll see, I'll see what's happening with the weather. Sun is coming out, so I'm definitely gonna paint. The burrito ritual here. Okay, now Amy, you're gonna have to, right? <laughs> These are the best burritos in Santa Cruz, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so it turns out Mora is in town and she's over at Twin Lakes Beach. It's foggy everywhere in town. She's painting waves and I'm like, all right, that kind of sounds fun. So I'm heading over to Twin Lakes Pe Beach and Amy's coming too. She brought her gouache paint, so she's gonna try uh, to paint as well. So that's the plan, just kind of rolling with it here. All right, just met uh, some Emma fans here. Hi! Hi, Hi Emma. Emma! I love you so much! Oh my gosh, this is so gouache. cool! Oh, gouache kit. Okay, yes. cool. Awesome. Hi. Oh, that's really neat. Yeah, well, it'll be fun. I've never painted with gouache, so it'll be cool to see what you get up to. It will. Yeah? You got your chair. You <laughs> yeah. got your... You're ready. I'm ready. All right, so Maura got a good head start here. Uh, what size is that, by the way? It's I like have a... no idea. I would say four inches by eight. Yeah, so it's like a one by two, uh, one by two ratio, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing, too. Lots of beautiful um, blue-greens in there. Any challenges? I mean, this is... How many wave paintings have you done now? Uh, I mean, on one hand. Wow. So, yeah, I, so I don't know what I'm doing, but I just keep staring and then making adjustments. So even on a cloudy day, there's so many great colors. There's the, the greens and the purples and the light blues, so. Oh, exactly, yeah. So I've got my Anderson easel as usual, 11 by 22 inch panel. I like to put the larger wave on the third and then, you know, probably some white water, the secondary wave breaking here, maybe some wet sand. So that's the idea. So I'm starting off by mixing some blue greens and I'm using mostly um, ultramarine. And then I mixed in some burnt sienna, which kind of uh, pushes it towards green uh, and grays it down a bit. And then I've also experimented putting a little bit of phthalo in as well. But as you can see, that's pretty strong. So if we mix some burnt sienna, it kind of grays it down, so maybe a little more, and moves it towards green. So I want to just have a nice variety of uh, sort of gray blues to work with. And then I can, you know, punch up the color later as necessary.
All right, Amy, so you're having fun? <laughs> yeah. All I'm right. very abstract. So does, like, I don't know a lot about gouache. Does the, does the paint dry pretty quickly? Is it, like, drying or is it still wet? Like, can you go over, like, how long before you can go over it with another color? Uh, it takes a little bit longer than I than with acrylics, which is why I've kind of ended up with this while looking at that. But um, <laughs> it it takes. But I don't know. This is really my first time using it. So yeah. I'll get back to you. On uh, that. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Let me know. Well, it looks like you're having fun. I am. That's, That's what good. counts. All right. So Maura's going for round two, huh? All yeah. right. So going with a square composition here. Only because that's the only big board I've got with me. Is this one? That's the big wave. The big and wave, right? Because I, I see that it's dark, so I'll put the white over, and then I need the dark at the bottom. So I'm just kind of making it dark now. I don't know. Yeah, it's so fun though. I think because it's like, like I said, it's like an abstract painting. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. And you almost can't go wrong. It's not like a face. You can't put the nose in the wrong spot. It's so true. Yeah. Exactly. So I've just kind of roughed in some colors here, trying to approximate, you know, the colors that I'm seeing. I was surprised I had to add a lot of alizarin crimson to this to kind of gray it down. Um, and you can see like the dark portions of the waves. I, I got to work on that. But I want to key the whole painting to the white water because that's going to be the brightest, you know, the brightest part of the painting. And then oftentimes what I'll do too is I'll just experiment, you know, with a paper towel, just kind of erasing areas <laughs> to reveal the white of the panel until I get a white water pattern that I sort of, uh, that's appealing to me. All right, so one of the things I've noticed when, you know, painting wave paintings is that it's pretty forgiving subject matter. And as long as you get the colors right, I mean, it's hard to go wrong, really. Uh, one thing I always do is pay attention to um, the wave, uh, the white water reflection in the flat water. Uh, that makes it look, you know, like it's reflective, so it makes it look like it's wet. Um, I like the placement of this wave. I'm feeling like it might be nice to have some white water over here. And then I like this sort of white water pattern here. Um, and then the wet sand is always kind of close in color to the sky because basically what it's doing is reflecting the sky. So that's where I am right now. All right, so you're going for round two, Amy, huh? Yeah. Cool. So yep, nice. There is a lot of purple in that ocean. Yeah. Lots. Ooh, that looks like butter. It does. It's going to be sand. <laughs> and then, I don't know what it is. Well, looking good. Oh, yeah. Nice colors in there. I also like the pattern of this uh, wave in the foreground. It's kind of the same as this one. But oh, that's you mean okay. having the, having the, uh, having kind of dip down on the right? Yeah, no, that's totally cool. Yeah, because I'm, I'm sort of doing it straight on, but <laughs> I don't want every single line to be horizontal. Right, I know, yeah. right? So yeah. That's one thing I noticed is that the waves are so, like when I first started painting waves, they were so like perfect and you know, and they're not, they're so messy. I know. And you look at them and you get what you want to see in like one second and then it's gone. You got to wait. And yeah. One thing that I like that is, you know, doing kind of building the wave out of short blocky strokes, oh, which is it really looks good. That's it, really working. It doesn't seem intuitive. Like intuitively, you want them to be longer, um, you know, but I, I just find like it, I don't know. I just like the shorter, blockier. And then if you get the key elements down, like that, you know, that dark line across the top of the broken wave, but not like make it all the way, just to suggest little bits here and there That's or whatever. Right. The eye does the rest. Feeling like I want to maybe 
have some white water over here or another little mini breaking wave. So I'll just take my paper towel and just kind of wipe down this area. The ocean is defined by those the white water. Yeah. Right? It's almost like you can have just like, you know, what you have there, put a few bits of white water and you got the ocean. Yeah. I know sometimes I think we make it harder than it needs to be. Oh definitely. All right, so I think I'm gonna stop here. Uh, don't wanna overwork it, but as usual, we'll take it back to the studio, put it in a frame. I like how you added clouds up top. That's really nice. And then also some nice reflections in the in the sand. You know, it's this area right here. I wanna make that flat. This it's area a, right here? Yeah, I'm not sure if I should do horizontals or diagonals or both. Yeah, there's not as much activity in this little portion right here, right. right, compared to these others. I mean, you could always add some color, horizontal color strokes in there, but I don't know. It's, it looks good to me. I like painting waves. Yeah. Get that out today. See, so you got it. Yeah. You got the bug. I did. I did. I'll be back. Okay, so here's the finished painting in one of my natural wood floater frames. And overall, I'm you know I'm happy with the arrangement of waves. I think putting this white water uh, in the middle here was uh, was a good thing, and also like a little suggestion of an unbroken wave there. Um, also, uh, you know having these little suggestions of breaking waves in the distance I think is nice as well. Um, usually when I paint waves my the primary wave is a lot bigger but in this case I kind of like uh, sort of a nice discovery keeping the waves you know having multiple waves and keeping them sort of small and a lot of times too when I do a larger wave I will not include the sand in the foreground uh, but I, I kind of like that as well I like having that sand there. I always want the pattern of the waves to be very random because that's kind of how they break. In other words, the bottom of the wave shouldn't be a straight line, the top shouldn't be a straight line, there should be a lot of irregularity. And I think by working quickly, you know, it, it sort of ensures that you're not going to be super careful and have, you know, like perfect shapes. I like to be very spontaneous so that the shapes almost applying them in a fluid way, the way the water would move, if that makes sense. As long as you have a basic understanding of the anatomy of a wave, you can just kind of play around with different shapes, different arrangements. Um, it's also an opportunity to experiment with paint application. You may have noticed in the early stages of this painting, it was just, it looks like a mess. And then you could just start coming in with thicker paint. I was using different types of brushes. I probably used three or four different brushes on this particular painting. Um, just kind of playing around until I got an effect that I liked. So like I said, it's, a, it's an opportunity to experiment with paint application um, and then also looking for subtle shifts. Um, you know, and even on a gray day, there's a lot of beautiful colors. Lots of nice blue greens, grays, purples. Anyway, as usual, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I will link Amy and Maura's information in the description below. Also, there's a Patreon link down below as well uh, in case you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel. Other than that, stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.